Inagaki nailed it. After five long years, I can happily say that Dr. Stone is one of the best manga there is. Sure, these last few chapters had their issues, but considering the insane expectations we had, I have to say this was a pretty solid ending. Which is saying a lot when Promise Neverland, AOT, and even Game of Thrones can't even do that right. This chapter had just about everything I was hoping for, and introduced a new invention that perfectly ties into what made Dr. Stone so special from the very beginning. But before I say more on that, I just want to remind you that with the upcoming Ryusui special and Season 3 of the anime, there's plenty more Dr. Stone content to look forward to. So make sure to subscribe to the channel so you can follow along with weekly discussions on all of that and more. With that out of the way, let's get right into the chapter. So the chapter starts off with our crew returning to Earth. And before I say anything else, let me just say, Boichi, God bless you for these gorgeous color pages. Back-to-back -back chapters with color pages is one thing, but the art in these last two chapters alone has been insane, and these color pages are no different. Now, one thing I want to point out is that this whole ceremony seems like it's taking place in the Kingdom of Science. More specifically, the area that used to be Sukasa's empire. I think it's awesome that it sort of ends where everything started. And on top of that, I was kind of worried about what was going to happen to Ishigami Village once they hit the modern era, but it's good to see that Ishigami Village clearly isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Then we have the actual ceremony, which is incredible because you have Stanley almost kind of embarrassed, which is out of character, but at the same time so damn cute. And then we got Kohaku snoozing it up like the meathead she is. We also have this panel of the metal, which is just so cool because it shows you that this is special. Like, they're fully recognizing Senku's efforts and acknowledging everything that he did to get to this moment. Then we have the next two pages, where we get these wholesome high fives, and one panel where I actually need your help. See this panel here with Kirasame and Luna? Now, see this girl in the middle? Who the heck is this? I legitimately have no idea who this is, so if you guys know or find out, then definitely let me know in the comments. Because it's actually killing me that I can't figure out who this is or if they're supposed to be important. Anyway, we get one more color spread, and one thing I want to bring to your attention is Senku's tool belt. You can see that he has his stone axe next to the Kawaii Man. Yes, you heard me right, that was Kawaii and Y Man. I just love this color spread because of how it ties back to Senku's quote from the previous chapter, and how it just reflects the insane progress Senku has made throughout the story. But after seven color pages, we start the chapter several years later with Gen acting as a diplomat. Now, as you can see, the first base has a KOS flag and an American flag, while the second base has a KOS flag and a Japanese flag. And after this, we learn that Gen was actually away from Japan. So the implication from these panels is that the Kingdom of Science has its own sort of embassies, and the world governments recognize that it has its own sovereignty. Very cool detail, because again, I wasn't sure what was going to happen to the village. Now, of course, the next thing we see is one of the most heavily anticipated moments in all of Dr. Stone. Going back all the way to the very first chapter, it's the wedding of Taiju and Yuzuriha. This was definitely one of the best moments in the chapter, because Inagaki knew what we wanted to see and gave us exactly what we asked for. Yuzuriha's parents are there, everyone partied for like two days, and it looks like mostly everyone was able to make it. But then we get a proposal. Sort of. I actually called this on Twitter when it got leaked, but I'm glad to see that our boy Chrome is just as childish as ever. Now at this point I have to point out the fake out girl Senku, because how could I not? I don't know how or why Inagaki did this, but thanks anyway, because it definitely got a laugh out loud for me. Next, we get something everyone was waiting for, which was how the heck these Medusas defy gravity. I'm not gonna lie, this isn't my field of expertise at all, but I did some quick Google research and discussed it with some friends who actually know what they're talking about. So I'm gonna go out of order from the chapter here and just briefly try to break it down for those of you who were just as confused as I was. The key component of the Medusas and their powers is this thing called the Higgs field. It's a very sophisticated topic in science, but just know it's what influences an object's mass at the fundamental level, so like even smaller than atoms. In other words, when the Medusas defy gravity, they're actually manipulating their mass via the Higgs field so that they float, even though the manga says that they're flying. 
This doesn't make complete sense though, because if your mass was zero, you wouldn't just float, you would just stop being matter altogether. Again, very messy, but that's the basic idea. So taking that one step further, when the characters say that they want to travel in time, the key component is this ability to manipulate mass. If you look at the roadmap, you'll see there's a light speed cyclotron motor, and it says that light speed is possible with a mass of zero. So how this would work isn't exactly clear, because one, it's time travel, so duh, and two, because the characters are still working through it themselves. But the basic idea seems to be traveling through time by reducing mass to zero, and thus traveling at the speed of light. Theoretically, it might be possible, but Inagaki definitely takes some creative liberty here. Not to say that this is a load of crap or anything, because for what he's trying to do, Inagaki does a great job making this sound believable. It's not clear exactly how it would work, but like Gen, we're sitting here like, damn, Senku might actually invent time travel. But I'll say more on that towards the end of the video. So going back to the chapter, we have this perfect callback to chapter one with Senku making random science noises and pretending like he cares about Taiju's relationship issues. It's a cute little scene that lets us know that Senku is still same old Senku. Speaking of cute and little, we have this panel here of Kawaii Man. And while I am so happy that they made it into the final chapter, this is something I want to pick apart. Because as much as I like the time machine, I am so confused by all of their theories. Not the AI robot though, because that was great. Speaking of which, let me just say as Dr. Stone Reboot's biggest fanboy, thank you Inagaki for giving us this crumb of a Ray moment in the canon story. But anyway, here's why I'm confused. So, Kawaii Man says they could go back in time to prevent the destruction of other Medusas. That part, I'm like, alright, I'm with you, I follow. But then there's this idea to shoot the Petra Beam in the past and save everyone before they met their fates. And I'm just sitting here reading this part like, um, what? So we're gonna petrify everyone to save them from getting petrified? Or maybe they're going beyond that and they're thinking maybe we could use time travel to petrify people before they die and save them. I don't know, the whole thing is very ambiguous and it's kind of just thrown in there. Which is another reason why I wish Inagaki had spent more time explaining things in the end of Dr. Stone. But after my massive headache, I was blessed with what is probably my favorite panel in the entire chapter. Senku thinking about Byakuya and the space team. And we see them in his room near all the science stuff and space posters. So with Kid Senku looking up to them, it's almost like these are his heroes. The heroes that sacrificed so much but that he could never save. It's just such a beautiful moment because we have the hero of the world thinking about his heroes and how thousands of years later, he still wants to save them. But finally, I want to talk about the time machine and why this means so much for Dr. Stone. I said before that time travel would ruin Dr. Stone because it would undermine the realism, but the way Inagaki did it was perfect. Not literally perfect for obvious reasons, but the timing was perfect. By waiting till the end to drop this tinfoil hat project, it actually makes us excited for it. Like now that we're back to normal and the story's over, we're excited to see Senku trying to invent what should be science fiction. And on top of that, this is actually the perfect way to tie everything together. Cause think about it. If you boil Dr. Stone down to one idea, I think it's pretty clear that it's this. Science transcends time. We have people frozen in stone, surviving for thousands of years. We have a father sending a message to his son across centuries of time. A civilization that lives on through the Stone Age. This idea has been present throughout the entire story, and it's perfectly embodied in this quote here from Kaseki, where he has this epiphany about the transcendental nature of science. So to end the story with a literal time machine is just the perfect callback to everything Dr. Stone is about. And we can see this when Senku says that science pierces across time. So for all of my complaints I have about this chapter and the final arc, I would be lying if I told you that I didn't love it. It's wacky, it's funny, it made me cry, and it reminded me exactly why I fell in love with Dr. Stone. So to close the video, I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Inagaki, for giving me these characters that I've grown to love. Thank you, Boichi, for drawing this world that feels like home. Thank you, Saxi, my editor, for helping me drop this special chapter review. 
and thank you to everyone who has followed me through each week of Dr. Stone. This is far from the last time we'll be discussing Dr. Stone, but I just want to say that this manga means even more to me because of all of you who talked with me about the story and shared your love of Dr. Stone with me. So to close out the video, thank you for everything, and I hope to hear from you soon.